What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the La Liga career mode. It's episode number 17. It's sloggy season. Sloggy season, man. I'm going to try and get through as much of it as we can today. Uh, starting with history, our Mary's first ever Challenge League game uh, in the group where we'll take on PSV at home. I I I'll do the first half of the group today no matter what, including all these La Liga games here. And we'll probably finish up with that trip to the Etihad against Man City. If we can squeeze it in, we'll also do Mallorca away as well. I'll see what I can do. It's sloggy season, man. No problem. First game, no, is indeed history. Uh, PSV in the Champions League group stage at home at the Power Horse Stadium. I said we should definitely target second place minimum. I think these are the guys we're battling with. So a start of a win on match day one will do us the world of good. Ramos Almeria. So for those who might not follow European football too closely outside of the main top five European leagues, if you will, uh, PSV currently in real life are having an unreal season and it is going under the radar in mainstream news and I do not know why because it is an extraordinary year. At the time of recording this commentary, it's Saturday afternoon, uh, they've played 22 uh, games and they've won 20 of them. And they've drawn twice and haven't lost a single game all season long. Oh, that's a crunching tackle from the iron now. They're going to go for a corner. Uh, so they're still undefeated. 22 games and still undefeated, winning 20 of their 22 games. Now, there's only ever been one team in V's history that have won the league title undefeated. And you know who they are. Of course, everyone would know. It is Ajax. And that was back when Ajax also won the Champions League back in the mid-90s. One of the best teams ever. It had uh, Clarence Seydorf. Uh, Edgar Davids, Mark Overmars, Van der Sar between the sticks, Patrick Cliver, a ridiculous team, absolutely ridiculous team. So for the PSV fans, they can't help but dare to dream that they might be joining Ajax as an unbeaten league champion for only the second time in league history. For any PSV fans I've got that are watching this, I know I've got at least one of them. Um, yeah, you might not be getting the credit in mainstream media as you deserve, but right now it has been a ridiculous season and you deserve a lot of plaudits for it as well. It's been a, uh, like I said, one of the, uh, the, the great seasons in Eredivisie history as things stand. Delafoe doubles up, two goals in quick succession, two in Almeria. Not sure if I mentioned, but uh, Ajax also won the Champions League that year as well. I think I said that. But yeah, they beat Milan in the final for a, for a league and Champions League double. Um, and oh my god, their team. I, ju I just looked it up at half time just to confirm I got those names right. I, this team has got to be one of the, the best teams in, in football history, right? Let me, let me read you some of the names here. There's, oh, I just couldn't get a third goal there. You've got Van der Sar between the sticks. Uh, you've got Danny Blin, who is the, uh, the, the father of Daly Blin, for, the, for those curious. Fantastic Dutch defender. You've got the De Boer brothers, Frank De Boer and, uh, and Ronald De Boer as well. You've got Frank Rijkaard, Ed Goddard, it's Clarence Sadoff, Yari Lippenham, Mark Overmars, Patrick Kleiber, Karno is there as well. It's, it's an unbelievable team, honestly. Fair play, man. And I know, I know for, for Ajax fans, it's been a tough season this year, to say the very, very least. Absolutely... Awful season, all things considered. But if you want to trip down memory lane and you want to feel good about past glory, just look at highlights from the 1994-95 season. This is one of the greatest teams in football history. The, the star names in there, the stars of that Dutch team, unbelievable, man. Absolutely incredible. And like I said, Yari Littmanen, Yari Littmanen as well. The, uh, the greatest Finnish player of all time before AK-47 and Tattoo Oliver as timber fires wide. Yeah, it might be an incredible season in real life for PSV right now, but in the save, it is all about Almeria's red-hot star. So the second year in a row, we've flown out of the blocks. And in our first ever CL game, it's a comfortable win on match day one. The perfect start to the group. And like I said, man, I do see Man City topping this with ease, but we're definitely eyeing up second. Anything shorter than that is a failure. Right, next up, Granada in an Andalusia derby at home as we're going to keep our 100% run going and make it six wins in a row in La Liga. Vamos out there, area. Right, thank you, Miguel. Back to Yulin. It's lit. Still tied at 0-0, early stages, obviously. These are sort of games where, you know, you're at home, you know, newly promoted side, in, in this case against Granada. You, you kind of want an early goal to settle the nerves, you know. You don't want to leave it too long before you break the deadlock because the, the longer the game on, goes on, the more you start to question yourself. Do you know what I mean? So in these sort of games, I, I know it sounds kind of obvious, but the, the sooner you can get a goal, the better. Oh, it's Delafoe plays just wide of the post because these are, and we talk about it, sometimes the hardest games to win. We'll have that, we'll have that, we'll have that. Oh, it's got to be one. No, easy. Wait, come across. 
Hey, thank you. And Delafeu bends one into the top corner. I, I cannot get over this guy, man. I really, really can't. Absolutely sensational. You know, we brought him in. I knew he was going to get me a few goals. I knew he was going to do all right for me because, you know, streets don't forget. But uh, this, this sort of player, I, I, I never would have seen Delafoe hit his peak right now in his early 30s. But you love to see it, man. 31 years old and entering his prime. I mean, you love to see it, don't you? You really do. And I love to see it as well, as a 31-year-old myself, you know. <laughs> Now was me thinking my best years are behind me and Delafay, he's inspiring me. He's saying, Gaffer, of course not, man. Hey, he's just a number. Look what we can do in our early 30s. There's Gabri Vega. Oh, scores a rocket to double up. And it's old to young, or let's just say senior to young. Ah, senior sounds even worse. Let's just say still kind of young to very young. Delafay to Vega, rocket 2-0. Seeing how the game was seven to go, just got full control of the ball right now, and just holding on to it. Really, I, I say this a lot, but like, if you're managing in a league like this one where the tiebreaker first goes head to head and then goal difference, if you notice you've got a game in midweek or you've got tired players, regardless, or you're worried about injuries, just hold on to the ball. Like if you've got the win, yeah, extending the goal difference is never a bad thing, but it's not seen as quite as important as if you were managing in the Premier League, for example. So just hold on to the ball. You might be able to build and get a chance as well. But otherwise, just... Oh, Delafoe, what a goal. Just don't surrender possession and keep hold of it. He's stirring the pot. He's on fire still. Gerard Delafoe makes it through. Yep, routine victory as the run of clean sheets and the run of wins gets extended. Almeri continue to fly and showing no signs of slowing down. I right, a big win. Let's keep it going. And as we see, our Egyptian fullback is going to go to Turkey and join Kaikur Rizespor on a two-year loan deal when January arrives. John Joe Shelby plays for them. I did not know that. I should have known that. After his mini little stint at Forest, he's, uh, he's gone out there. Interesting stuff. But he's retired in my safe. But anyway, um, Real Batiste uh, following game away in Seville as we aim to keep our 100% starts of the season going. Vamos Almeria. So I think I'm right in saying that last year... 100% uh, star was ended by Real Batiste. It's actually a home game, not an away game. But we've got history with these guys, man. They, they, they ended our, uh, our Red Hot start last season. They'll want to do the same thing again. And we've got some tired legs out there. But... Oh, Ramsey straight to the keeper. I, I say this a lot, man. We, we can go on those winning runs. We've, we've got to make sure we just keep it going for as long as possible. Real Madrid has stumbled out the blocks a little bit. But just like last season, you know they're going to come back into the picture not before long. Ramazani, second time's the charm. Almeria in front. Last season, it was Batiste that ended our 100% start. This year, I ain't letting it happen again. Oh, what a turn. What a turn. Oh, what a goal. What a goal. Iosa Perez has just, um, has just done me in there with a glorious little turn. Um, blimey. And Batiste have their level instantly. Oof. Oh, okay, you can tell they're up for it. The I like it, though. I like it a lot, man. I don't want teams just to, to lie down except with a far better team. No, no, I like this, man. Bring on the challenge. As we're uh, oh, still tied at 1-1, one -one, but there's, there's definitely more goals tonight. You see Easy, William Carvalho. Oh, what a back heel that is. And, oh, what a finish. Into the bottom corner. You only get to nowhere near it. Batiste completed the turnaround. Well, last season, like I said, man, they ended at 100% start of a draw. This season, they might end it with a win. Real Batiste, we're forming a little rivalry with them, it feels. But I said this, man, this is what makes RTGs fun when you create sort of like in, in save rivalries, you know. We got one with Mallorca, and now Batista adding to the mix as well. Gutierrez. Vega. Ramazani, straight at the keeper. And cleared away. 20 to go. Haven't been at my best in this game. First to admit I haven't played well. This is one of those games. Bakayoko is going to level one from range. Shot blocked and eventually cleared by William Carvalho. Love the strength in the box out there. Still down by one. 100% start's definitely going. But is the unbeaten start going too? Need a leveller. This is over. This is over. Batista going to... Oh, what a ball. Guiliano Simeone for the dagger. What a last-ditch tackle by Capete. My goodness. Oh, 
Oh, not Lozano. Oh. Just a DM, really. It was just the only man that was free on the edge. To be fair, it was a clean strike. But palmed away and Batiste hold on. Would have been amazing how we leveled it after that last ditch tackle from Repete. But Batiste have done it again. They're the Almeria stoppers. Last year of a draw, this year of a win. The in save rivalry continues to strengthen. Our first loss of the year. Oh, I'm loving this though. Like honestly, I'm absolutely loving this. I say this all the time, man. Like, pe people ask me like, how how do you uh, how do you stay engrossed in an RTG? How do you keep it going for so long? Like, there's so many tips I could give. I probably should do a video really where I'm like, here's my top five tips on how to make an RTG more enjoyable. Um, I'm not sure I did the whole video talking like that. So tip number one, uh, but uh, seriously, in save rivalries, if you've got one already, like we do with like Cadiz and, and Granada, for example, but you know, create some as the save is going on as well. Batista and Mallorca have come become rivalries, rivals of ours now, and we know that Real Madrid, Fleco and Barca are getting there as well, including Xavi's Barca, who are top of the table, unlike us, 100% themselves, seven wins in seven and three points clear. Massive game as second host first at the top of the table. Vamos Almeria. Also a homecoming for Montu as well. Well, not really a homecoming. Barcelona is his home. He's back home, mate. But uh, visiting his, uh, his, I don't know, like his stepdad's home for this game here. Almeria. Um, he's got 83 overall now, by the way. 83 overall. I don't know if you guys noticed this. When you like, you have a player on loan and then they go back to their parent club or you sell a player, they often like have a little overall spike. Montu's grown like three ratings since we sold him, man. It's crazy. It's Delefeu. It was kept quiet in Seville. Oh, puts it onto the roof of the net. Easy, easy, easy. Oh, man. Bring him down or let him go through. Probably should have gone with a former. I mean, if you could add the thing, you, know, you take him down, it's a straight red card. You know, not only you've considered a free kick in a dangerous area, but you're also down to 10 men for the rest of the game. That's always one of those moments there where it's like, kind of like Sophie's choice. You know, Sophie's choice. It's like, you know, no matter what you decide to do, it's it's a bad and a hard decision. But um, yeah, tough Camelo to Gerard. Now get it back. Now back to Delefeu, and now Bakayoko makes the right run. Oh, there we go. Wonderful ball by Delefeu, though, and hold on. There we go. Really well done, and Camelo wraps the move off as well. That is a fantastic ball by Delefeu through to Bakayoko as well. Talk about threading the needle there. The margin for error was so small. Look at that. We just about got it through on time, and as Camelo goes off the covering defender, it's an easy, easy finish. When you've got a two-on-one like that, I always say, just keep calm. Keep calm, because you're going to be able to make a decision, you know. You don't want to give the de defender the benefit by offloading the ball quickly. You know, just keep running. Eventually, the covering defender will come across. When he does, you've got a free man to offload to. If he doesn't, and he stays with the uh, the running man next to you, then you can go all the way to shoot a goal. So I always say, in situations like that, just keep calm. You either have a free man to pass to, or have a free sighted goal. Either or, one to two. Delefeu wins it back. Well done, but sadly, Ramazani loses out to Rafinha. It's been a really good game, this to be fair. Very, very good contest. Very even. Both teams getting chances. Tough tackles. It's a sort of uh, toy the table clash you always look forward to. I think it's now going to be the first team to stop Barcelona, but... Oh, Rafinha's just done me in. Oh, and go on a block. Captain Marvel. Deflects it behind for a corner. That is why he earned the contract extension. That is why he got his salary trebled. The skipper with a goal saving block. It's not going to be a return to any ways, but all things considered, taking on a 100% Barcelona side and coming back into the game from a trading position. Sometimes you just got to know when a draw is a good result. I know last season we said quite often that draws would be considered defeats in the hunt for a title, but to be the first team to stop Barcelona all season long, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to say no to a point there. Right, next up, Royal Antwerp away in Belgium, aiming to get back to winning ways here in all competitions against a side who, to be fair, have a couple of decent players. Toby Alderweireld, Vincent Janssen, Bobby Reid, and Swansea legend, Alhassan Youssef. Vamos Almeria. Yeah, don't get me wrong, I'd still consider this to be the weakest team in the group, but um, even so, a couple of, couple of decent players in there. Again, to Toby Alderweireld, the vet, and... Um, I mean, we, we know how good Alhassan Youssef was in the, uh, in the Swansea team, either as a, uh, a ball-winner midfielder or a, uh, a wing-back. And the Belgians almost went in front early as well. Agra is about with the save, and this is, this is form, man. When, when you're struggling for wins, you go into any game feeling a little bit nervy. We've got to bounce back here and make sure we, uh, we get the three points. 
Okay, okay. Holds it up. He's got two blue shirts with him. And he'll feed through Gary Vega, who is on side. My false nine tonight. Oh, held it up brilliantly. But who is there to make a last-ditch clearance? Well, we saw him do it for Swansea a lot. Al Hassan Yusuf. That was going to be 1-0. Pegged back into the middle. And he just about got there in time. Tough first half, this man. We are struggling. Granted, I had to make a lot of changes due to fatigue. No Delefeu, no Ramazani, no Edgar, the captain. That's why Capetto's got the armband today with uh, both Edgar and Delefeu out. But even so, I've, I've really struggled in this one, man. I have just not got going. Oh, I see. Hold on. Oh, go on. Vega, Vega. Oh, I just couldn't feed it through to Yusuf. has just absolutely bossed the midfield for Royal Antwerp, man. We, we know how good this guy is, man. We saw him at Swansea. He is just absolutely dominated in the centre of the park today. What a ball! And Janssen fires home. The Belgians in front. Almeria flew out of the blocks. And Adesen crashing down to earth. Well, I said second place minimum. And on the back of the win against PSV, I was feeling confident, but... Yes, Melamed! Can't lose this. I'm sorry, but this this will be a disastrous result. Get rid of, get rid of. Timber. Arriva's with you. Okay, no, it's fine. Fine. Don't know what noise that whisper. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Pegs it back to the edge. Melamed! Nico Melamed completes the turnaround. And the very first signing in the Dock Zero has bailed his gaffer out. Oh man, that is a massive win. Can't can't understate the importance of that win, man. Because when you're not the favourite to top the group and you know you might just need to sneak in as runner-up, you can't fail to win what are considered to be the bankers against the weakest side in the group. Melamed to the rescue. Almeria come from behind to close out a huge three points in Belgium. Right, next up, in form, Athletic Bilbao away at the Estadio San Mamens as we aim to make it back-to-back -back wins in the Basque region. Vamos Almeria. It's a shame that, like, you know, in, in CM, um, there's no nothing hard-coded into the game for Bilbao to only sign Basque players. So for those that don't know, Bilbao have this uh, policy where they only sign and play players from the Basque region. Um, you know, all, all about homegrown talent, which makes what they've done over the years just ridiculously impressive. Um, but, but even if you couldn't do Basque region because of, you know, the, the limitations of knowing where a player is born, for example, that information isn't stored in, uh, in the career mode database, why not just hard code it into the game? Oh dear. Why not just hard code it into the game so they can only sign Spanish players? You know, like a club and country, for example. Doxy Roy, you know all about the club and countries, don't you? Uh, why not? Like, wh why not just have it coded so they can only sign Spanish players, you know? Because it at least adds a little bit of an element to a realism to it. As opposed to having the likes of Leon Goretzka and Jared Bowen and Tolkien and so and so forth in their lineup. That's a scrappy goal to concede that. Awful start, Bill Bow in front. Yeah, Timber winning, mate. But Sanchez still gets away, but then Timber wins it back. And he still holds on to it. Sanchez is such a great player. So San Sanchez is the sort of player who, despite having the, the frame of a target man, physically so strong, he can play deeper, play players in with great hold-up play, great ball control, great passing, as Jared Bowen almost found the second goal. And he kind of reminds me a bit of like a Yaya Torre in a way, you know, a physically strong, imposing player. And great further forward, in my opinion, best further forward, but also so good when deeper as well. And charging through the lines, so hard to get the ball off. Still down by one. Is, oh, what a ball. Hold on, guys. Because I need a goal. Jennifer! Oh, puts it wide. I don't think Sanchez has ever been compared to Yaya Torre in his life, to be honest. But it's just who he reminds me of. You know, the way he carries the ball forward. It's, I mean, he's just effortless, you know. He's, he's such a tremendous, tremendous player. And I have absolutely no doubt in my mind. He is, he is going to hit some big heights, man. He's still so young as well. That's a cracking ball over the top, that. And Ramazani gets a shot away, but Simon deals with it comfortably. Oh, wait, 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 wait. oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Delefeu, come with me, come with me, because even though I probably could have finished with Vega, I wasn't going to take any chances. Oh, could not afford to have two losses in four in the league, and both on the road as well. 
It's 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 a bit of a cheap goal. I'll be honest, I've got my hands held up right now. It is a cutback. It's cheap. I don't do it often, but every now and then I need to, man. I need to. We know wins in three in the league, but at least not back to back losses away. Or will we win it? Bakayoko! Oh, I don't believe it! Capitulation in the Basque region! Bakayoko drills home! And from kickoff, Bilbao thrown it away! Goodness gracious, what a bottle from Bilbao. From a goal up to losing it 2 1 at the death with a quick fire double from Almeria. Shades of Leicester versus Spurs a couple of years ago when they won it 3 2 in stoppage time with two goals and the, 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 the winner practically from kickoff through Bergvine. If you've never seen that crazy finish, one of the craziest finished I've seen to a Premier League game. Not quite the same, but it felt quite similar. Almeria win it at the death. What a throwaway. Right, let's do two or three more. Uh, next up, Villarreal at the Powerhall Stadium as we aim to make it three wins on the chop in all competitions on the back of the international break. Vamos Almeria. Where are you going? Yeah, we'll have that, we'll have that, we'll have that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I see you, Delafo. It's really well done. He's onside there because the centre half in the middle. Couldn't find space until we do with Ramazani. I tell you what, man, in, in this team, Ramazani never really gets the plaudits for his offensive play. I mean, obviously, you know, we brought in Gary Vega, superstar from Saudi Arabia. Delafo would always be our main man up top, but Ramazani is just always there, adding a goal or an assist when required, man. Tends to turn up in the big games, too. Almeri in front. Well, it's not going to be a dominant victory, but it is a win regardless. First clean sheet after none in four for Yulin, and three wins on the trot for Almeria. Finally, after a mini inconsistent patch, we are back in form. Big three points at home. Right, let's do one more. Our final game today, the third game of the Champions League group stage, where both us and Man City have won our first two as we go head-to-head -head in the right four top spot in the Champions League group. Massive game to end on today in Manchester. Vamos, Almeria. Ariela to James McAtee. That's Foden. Oh, what a ball. McAtee. Oh, he's just put Juno on the floor. But puts it the wrong side of the goal. Into the side netting. James McAtee. But what a, what a ball it was into him there. My goodness. I tell you what, man. Phil Fuck, what a player. Like, he's not called to stop Port Messi for no reason. What a player he is. Still 0-0, no -no, but a let off there. Well, I have to say, this was uh, not a great game. And listen, a point at the Etihad is a good result for any team. So I'm pleased with it, don't get me wrong. Seven points taken from nine in the group. And the most difficult game ends with a point and a clean sheet. It's a good result, but it's not the result we're going to end on. We're doing one more after that. And it should be a good one as well, because it's one of our new rivals that we've been developing over the years since we've been in Mallorca, away in the Balearic Islands, as we aim to get back to winning ways here and close out with a big three points and possibly go top of the table. Vamos, Salmeria. Yeah, it's not, you know, like our main rivalry. Obviously, that's going to be against Granada or Cadiz. And it's not going to be one of our, uh, our sort of like, you know, top of the table rivalries, for example. That would be Barca, Real or Atletico. But again, I, I know I said this earlier, but this is just a, a really simple way to make your games more interesting, more immersive, more enjoyable, and more fun as well. Create those rivalries and develop them within a save. So when we face them, we know it's going to be a good one. It's going to be intense, and it started that way as well. The Batman, Bournemouth icon, Martin Batarina, opens the scoring. You know they're up for this, as are we. Mallorca in front early. Gutierrez to Timber. Through the gap. There's a rebound. So I see you, Ramazani. I see you. Don't think I don't see you, because I do, and I'll find you. That sounded a bit weird. This is... <laughs> you serial killer, Doxy boy. Ramazani, Delafeu. Oh, wonderfully done. Back of Yoko. Really well done. Winning it back. Offloading across. There's always going to be a free man in the middle, and there is Bakayoko to make it 1-1. It's not really the best of games, I'll be honest. They're still tied at 1-1. 12 to go. As it looks as though it's set for a draw. There has been an injury for Timber, by the way. He soldiered on out there. But I've got a feeling it's going to be a, a classic career mode broken toe for our number eight. That's the injury he had last season around January, February time. 
I've got a feeling it'll be the same again for our Dutch box to box. I'll let you know come the full time whistle how bad it was. As Lorraine shot is denied by Ulam. Is there going to be a late winner? So in here, not a great result to close out on. A draw away at Mallorca. Back-to-back -back draws as well. But it does extend our unbeaten run to six as we stay neck and neck with Barcelona, only one point behind in the race for the La Liga title. And thankfully, Simba's injury, by the way, was just a bruise. But that'll do it for today's episode of the La Liga career, guys. So big thank you for you enjoyed it. If you have done, please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode as we continue to play through Sloggy Season with more big games in La Liga. And I'll try and play match days 4, 5 and 6 in the Champions League group stage as we aim to qualify for the knockout stages. Have a great day, much love, and I'll see you for the next episode very soon.